Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I have the second video in my DIY Valentine's Day card mini series. And I'm gonna walk you through the supplies. You'll need some watercolor paper. I highly recommend you use watercolor paper. You'll need actually scissors, not an X-Acto knife that's pictured there. You'll need a black marker, a white gel pen, some inexpensive watercolors with the brush that comes with the set, and also a, some tape to tape down your watercolor piece. You'll also need some adhesive, but you could use whatever adhesive you have on hand. Have a piece of scratch paper here, and I'm folding this in half, and I'm going to be creating a large heart, similar to the way that we're taught how to create hearts when we're in elementary school. So I'm drawing half of the heart from the fold, and this is going to make sure that as I cut out my heart that it's perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to use those scissors that I mentioned before, and I'm just going to cut out this half of the heart. I'm going to use this as a template or kind of almost like a stencil to draw a heart shape eventually in the video. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute and I'll, you'll see that come back here in a while. So the watercolor card that I'm using today is actually four and a quarter by 11 inches long, kind of like from a nine by 12, actually 12 inches long, kind of like from a nine by 12 sheet of watercolor paper. And I folded a square card and then the remaining piece I'm actually going to be painting on. So I'm taping down my watercolor paper to my work surface here. You can tape it down to a table, um, a piece of cardboard, just something that's going to hold that piece of watercolor paper down while you're painting. Um, it's really helpful to have it taped down because it, as it dries, it will prevent any warping and then that makes it easier to cut things out of it later. And it just looks a little bit more finished. So I'm going to create a really pale pink shade and I'm going to be painting the pale pink shade over this entire square or rectangle of watercolor paper. So I'm mixing some of the red color with a tiny bit of the, of the purple and that kind of tones down the really like tomatoey red color. I wanted it to tone down just a little bit kind of kind of hint at a little bit of purple. And then as I add more and more water and dilute that paint down, it's going to create the perfect pale pink shade. So I'm going to paint this all the way across this watercolor piece of paper. And really, if I was going to be using um, some different supplies, I might switch to a bigger brush at this point, just because I'm painting a larger area. But because I'm keeping myself to only using the supplies um, for this watercolor set that come with the set, I just use that small brush. And this just goes to show that you can get it done. It just takes a little longer. I'm going to let that pale pink layer dry completely before I move on. And while it's dry, air drying, I'm going to mix four other shades or four other colors to use on this background. I'm gonna be creating a plaid pattern. So I want to make sure that I have some distinct different colors, but also that they have a little bit, um, that they relate to each other, I guess you would say. So I'm mostly using a uh, red, violet, or that purple, a little bit of blue, and some yellow. And I'll add some black here in a bit. But I mostly just want to mix some different shades. I want kind of a dark maroon red, a true red, more of a coral, and then a purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix all four of these shades, and I'm gonna keep mixing them until I feel comfortable with those shades. This is one of those ways that can really stretch your watercolor palette, no matter if it's an inexpensive one like this, you know, under $2, or you're using more expensive paints. A really great way to stretch those supplies is to mix your own colors. And it also makes it look like you have a more expensive set. So you can really get away with using a really inexpensive watercolor set. So I'm going to start and paint on some stripes. I've sped up the video clips here just because it did take quite a bit of time. Um, I think it was about maybe 10 minutes of painting. And basically what I'm doing is I'm painting stripes in varying widths and I'm doing all of the horizontal stripes first. Now these don't have to be absolutely perfect. You can tell mine are a little bit wobbly and they're not entirely straight. Um, I just want to get some color down. This is going to be a very... Um, how would I say, a handmade looking card. And I think that that's totally fine, that's perfect. That's what we're going for. But it's also gonna look really polished because it's gonna be really clean and we're gonna to try to use our watercolor set in a more minimalistic manner. So I'm adding another 
uh, direction of stripes. I let that first direction dry completely. And now I'm repeating the same pattern going in the other direction. So I'm using those same colors that I did before. And I'm using the exact same order of how I painted the stripes as well. I kind of figured out my own pattern the first time. So I'm just going to mimic that pattern on this direction as well. So this is super easy. You just want to make sure that you get all those colors down from edge to edge. And then you're going to let this completely dry once again. So before I peel up my tape, I'm going to take that heart template that I created earlier and I'm going to kind of push it off to one side and kind of angle it. This is going to make sure that the pattern on the heart is actually at a diagonal and it looks a little bit more dynamic. I think it looks more fun that way. So I'm going to trace this on with a pencil. And then I'll go ahead and peel this up from my work surface here. And then I can take my scissors and cut out my heart. So it's always easier to sort of uh, just really slowly go around that shape. You can turn the paper, which I think is a little bit easier, or you can turn your scissors. And now I'm going to take my heart over to my square card base. This is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card base made out of watercolor paper. You could actually have this made out of any other kind of cardstock because we're not really going to be watercoloring on this layer. We're just going to be drawing a background for our heart. So I'm taking my Sharpie. This is a, a fine tip Sharpie and I'm tracing around the inside of that penciled heart that I traced. And then I'm going to go around and add some circles. And these are circles that are pretty much the same size. They kind of were a little smaller at first, a little closer together. Then as I started moving along, they kind of spread out a little bit. But you want to keep them as even as you can and have a little bit of space in between them as well. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a second line right on the outside edge. This is going to close the gap between those circles a little bit more. And it's going to give kind of like a scallop edge around the watercolor heart once that's adhered to the card. Adding some more in that center. And I'm going to go around and add more in the middle just because I'm going to be adhering the heart on top. And I want to make sure that there's no white showing on the edges. So now we have this really fun scallop shape. And that pat pattern heart can go right on top. And I've also got this extra piece of watercolor paper left over from cutting out the heart. So I've turned it over, the plaid pattern is on the back, and I'm using that black Sharpie to draw in two long lines. I'm going to use these to create my sentiment. This is similar to the black and white sentiment that I used in my video on Monday. Kind of the same idea, sort of resembles that kind of label maker kind of ticker tape. I think it looks really, really fun. So I've used a white gel pen just to write the words, Happy Valentine's Day. And after I've cut those out with my scissors, I went around the edges and kind of markered over those edges so that they're completely black. This uh, kind of also lends itself to that look of that label maker stuff. And also I think it just looks a little bit more polished. So I'm placing these on top of the heart just so I can get an idea of how they're going to be spaced once I have them on the card. And then I went ahead and adhered them down with a little bit of foam tape. You don't have to use foam tape or a dimensional adhesive. You can use any glue you have on hand, whether that's kind of like a tape runner adhesive or even liquid glue. I think any of that would work. Mine's a little bit dimensional since I used foam tape, but you definitely don't have to use foam tape if you don't have it. So that's the second video in my mini series for DIY Valentine's Day cards. I will have another video for you next Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching.